My First Summer in the Sierra by John Muir, June 29th. I have been making the acquaintance of a very interesting little bird that flits about the falls and rapids of the main branches of the river. It is not a water bird in structure, though it gets its living in the water and never leaves the streams. It is not web-footed, yet it dives fearlessly into deep swirling rapids, evidently to feed at the bottom, using its wings to swim with underwater just as ducks and loons do. Sometimes it wades about in shallow places, thrusting its head under from time to time in a jerking, nodding, frisky way that is sure to attract attention. It is about the size of a robin, has short, crisp wings, serviceable for flying either in water or air, and a tail of moderate size slanted upward, giving it, with its nodding, bobbing manners, a Rhenish look. Its color is plain bluish ash, with a tinge of brown on the head and shoulders. It flies from fall to fall, rapid to rapid, with a solid whir of wing beats like those of a quail, follows the windings of the stream and usually alights on some rock jutting up out of the current or on some stranded snag or rarely on the dry limb of an overhanging tree, perching like regular tree birds when it suits its convenience. It has the oddest, daintiest, mincing manners imaginable, and the little fellow can sing too, a sweet, thrushy, fluty song, rather low, not the least boisterous, and much less keen and accentuated than from its vigorous briskness one would be led to look for. What a romantic life this little bird leads on the most beautiful portions of the streams, in a genial climate with shade and cool water and spray to temper the summer heat. No wonder it is a fine singer, considering the stream songs it hears day and night Every breath the little poet draws is part of a song, for all the air about the rapids and falls is beaten into music, and its first lessons must begin before it is born by the thrilling and the quivering of the eggs in unison with the tones of the falls. I have not yet found its nest, but it must be near the streams, for it never leaves them. June 30th Half cloudy, half sunny, clouds lustrous white. The tall pines crowded along the top of the Pilot Peak Ridge look like six-inch miniatures exquisitely outlined on the sanity sky. Average cloudiness for the day about 0.25. No rain. And so this memorable month ends a stream of beauty unmeasured, no more to be sectioned off by almanac arithmetic than sun radiance or the currents of seas and rivers. A peaceful, joyful stream of beauty. Every morning arising from the death of sleep, the happy plants and all of our fellow animal creatures, great and small, and even the rocks, seem to be shouting. Awake, awake, rejoice, rejoice. Come love us and join in our song. Come, come. Looking back through the stillness and romantic, enchanting beauty and peace of the camp grove, this June seems the greatest of all the months of my life. The most truly, divinely free, boundless like eternity, immortal. Everything in it seems equally divine. One smooth, pure, wild glow of heaven's love, never to be blotted or blurred by anything past or to come.